I will be starting at Mall Z1 and they're gonna be going in the dome in the chronological order for my sanity. Um and Mall Z1 and the first chapter of Mall Z1 sorry is Caribbean Society and Culture. Um yeah. So uh, the first thing in chapter one is actually locating the Caribbean and there is a fair amount of geography in a sense in this particular chapter. Um, that we have to deal with and I'll try my best to explain I'm not the best with where everything is located but I will definitely try my best okay so your learning objectives for this chapter are you should be able to define and locate the Caribbean itself along with other landmarks on a on a map uh, also you should be able to understand the importance of geographical historical geological and political criteria as it relates to the Caribbean and lastly also understand how culture and society help define a region because they actually do. Alright, so hopping straight into it. Um, notable features that you're going to have to learn about and stuff like that and also be able to identify on the map are the archipelago, um, also water bodies and the isthmus. Well, strange. Anyway, so the archipelago is a group of islands closely scattered in a body of water, um, usually this body of water is the ocean, but it can also be a lake or river. And obviously water bodies include islands, seas, lakes, gulfs, and oceans. Um, I'm going to show you this soon on the map and everything, so don't be dismayed if you don't really get what's going on. And lastly, the isthmus uh, is a narrow strip of land with sea on either side forming a link between two larger areas of land. Um, there's actually one on the Caribbean map that I'll show you in a second. So uh, this is the Caribbean map, obviously labeled and everything. The hard part is that um, if, if anything, it's actually going to be a blank map, and you have to put in a lot of this information. Not necessarily where every country is, but you will certainly have to put in the landmarks that I mentioned before and other major stuff about the Caribbean. So before I would have mentioned the archipelago, which is the small cluster of islands and those are represented here on this map as i'm pretty hoping you can see my mouse i should have made it made it bigger for this class but um the leeward antilles right over here which is like anguilla st martin barbuda antigua and etc and long down here which is the windward islands which is us barbados and uh, st lucia st vincent grenada so sorry about that um still hoping that you can see because i'm pretty new with this but um so i was saying the windward islands is also um which is us um st lucia st vincent grenada trinidad and tobago and you also have the leeward antilles so it's the let the leeward islands the windward islands and the leeward antilles which is aruba caraco bonaire and the other little tiny ones along there as well you also have the greater antilles which is this whole stretch along here with cuba the cayman san santa the santiago the cuba haiti and etc um the other landmark would have mentioned in the water bodies so the water bodies you have to make note of is the gulf of mexico up here in the top left corner also the atlantic ocean right here North Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea which is the major one also just in the corner depending on the map that you get is the Pacific Ocean which is below the Panama Canal and Panama and all that down that side all right and the last land farm that I would have mentioned is the if if must I'm really going to struggle with this but um um if, if I go back that is a narrow strip of land with sea on either side forming a link between two larger areas of land and what I can say here is that this is the only isthmus on isthmus of this map which is right here which is the actual the Panama Canal um, connected to Colombia and Honduras up here so you can see that the Caribbean Sea does not touch the Pacific Ocean in this area right here and that is the isthmus on this Caribbean map um, I think they covered everything in terms of the landmark, the archipelago, water bodies and such like, so I'll go on to the next slide. Um, but yeah, I would um, definitely tell you to look at the maps and kind of learn those major things. 
um, this this is a, a example of like a blank map. Um, it's not the clearest though, but it would show you how you would get a map, and then you'd have to fill it out. And you can see in this one, you can't really see the um, Pacific Ocean in the bottom left, but you know that the Caribbean Sea is in the middle here. Above here is the Atlantic. Or is it? Yeah, the Atlantic, North Atlantic, and up here is the Gulf of Mexico. There's the leeward, the windward is somewhere here. Down here is the lesser, and up here is the greater. So just those things you have to pay very close attention to. And you'll also see it come later in terms of defining the Caribbean. Knowing these things will help you do that as well. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay, so here is uh, the geological definition of the Caribbean. Um, this outlet of the Caribbean uses the Caribbean plate. Now, as you can see, the Caribbean plate is in the middle here, and it goes right around here. And comes back around right here now if you use this definition to define the Caribbean you will be leaving out quite a few places that are still we would actually consider to be Caribbean because the North American plate is right above here it kind of collides with this Caribbean plate right up top here and that wouldn't include any of these greater I want to say greater Antilles up here but it wouldn't um, so yeah just there is that in mind as well. So the next definition of the Caribbean is the Caribbean Basin. And this definition uses the Caribbean Sea as the major landmark. And the lands washed by the Caribbean Sea, like the mainland territories of Central and South America, um, all of those will be considered Caribbean. Uh, this is a traditional geographic definition. Yes, it is. Okay, so the Caribbean is also defined using the coordinates. This is also pretty important, um, such as the lines of latitude and longitude to locate the Caribbean. Longitude, uh, this is really important information right here. So I do stress on important information that you will have to remember, and this is it. The defining the Caribbean using the lines of longitude and latitude. Longitude is 60 degrees west to 85 degrees west, and that is actually east to west. I thought that was interesting to note. And longitude is 5 degrees north of the equator to 25 degrees slash 30 degrees north and I will get into that slash 30 later um, do I have the degrees on? no I don't have it on this map I was supposed to add a map that showed where the degrees are but I didn't that's my bad I'm gonna add it before I actually post these slides though so no worries alright so further definitions of the Caribbean defining the Caribbean space only physically and when I say physically I mean all the prior definitions I would have just given um, it ignores the importance of the human aspect, right? Um, the historical Caribbean and its cultural legacy exceeds more than the mere geographical or geological barriers, cultural heritage and cultural diversity. And before we go on to this, in terms of the, um, the historical Caribbean and using that means to define it, I want to go back here and make, um, make a point. Where I, not this far, right here. So, even the physical definitions, they're not only discounted by the fact that, you know, you have to, the historical definition that we're going to get into later, but it's also important to note that the reason it's slash 30 degrees is because if you don't go up that high, you won't include Bermuda, which some people do include as the Caribbean. And so you would see with all the prior definitions, there was some sort of issue, some sort of lacking that would leave out something that is actually still Caribbean. So, um, for example, the first definition was this definition, geological definition. You see that if you use the Caribbean plate, all the islands on top of it, that you leave out all of the great, a lot of the greater Antilles and even like Panama down at the bottom and stuff like that. And then with this definition, the, the ones that are washed by the Caribbean Sea, you'd note that, if I had to show you this map, that these islands above here, so the Turks and Caicos and this whole set, are not washed by the Caribbean Sea. Actually, they are, but ones down here um, are way over here and stuff like that. I'm hoping you can see my mouse, I really do, are not. Right? So it doesn't give a full definition. Either. Also, Bermuda is literally out of this map scope, and that isn't washed by the Caribbean Sea. That is actually in the North Atlantic Ocean. So that's a really good example. So Bermuda is like somewhere above here. Uh, above the Bahamas. Alright, um, so now let me get to the, right here where it was at, the historical definition will be the next slide. So, 
again, um, the historical Caribbean and its cultural legacy exceeds me just the mere geographical or geological barriers. So we have to think about things like cultural heritage and cultural diversity. Just give me one second here. Um, I want to pull up. I won't show you it, but I have something that's pretty important on this other side. Okay, so where was I? Good. So with the further definitions of the Car Caribbean, I want to start with the political Caribbean and the different forms of government. Alright? But even before I do that, I should I will first finish the historical. So we have the historical, which is this one, the political, and uh, then we're, we're going to go to the identity. Okay, so, good. So I'm going to stay here. And I didn't put a lot of information on the slides so that it would just be a whole bunch of slides. But I'm going to talk to you a lot. And you can watch the recording. It's going to be recorded. And also look on the slides if you find any information was really um, relevant to you, right? But I really want to do a lot of talking because in terms of the historical Caribbean and stuff like that, it could get a bit wordy. And I didn't want to put all of that on slides to bore you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk out talk through a lot of it and make examples and references that you can relate to all right just give me a second what is this? i have a really important message for us at the historical caribbean we have to look at cultural heritage um when we look at cultural heritage the main thing is mostly about language all right language gives rise to cultural differences and is mainly distinguished between the wider Latin regions and the Caribbean. So like, for example, language and cultural heritage of places like Cuba or the Dominican Republic would go hand in hand with main, main territories in the Latin America. But geographically, they're in the Caribbean, right? With the geographical definitions. So then we use the differentiation to realize that we can't exactly define them with folk culture heritage because again Bermuda does not is not part of the mainland so you will always see that there are exceptions that occur so one factor alone will not be enough to locate and define the Caribbean um, so you got to bear in mind that there are always going to be exceptions to the rule no matter which definition you use so like historically in terms of like language we have English speaking we have French speaking and we also have Dutch, I think, Dutch speaking in the Caribbean. So that's like the cultural heritage and it links back to like the Europeans that would have came and brought us here from, or not us, exactly saying everyone, but brought us from Africa and stuff like that. All of that is our like cultural heritage and it doesn't, it isn't succinct or it doesn't stay the same for all of the islands in the Caribbean. Some were by the Portuguese, some was by the Europeans. In terms of us being colonized, col colonialized, sorry, um, is different. So when we look at that to define the Caribbean, that doesn't give us an accurate picture either. So it would lead us to believe that there are exceptions, of course, and also the fact that can we add all, if we put, pull all of these definitions together, then is that the Caribbean? Everything that comes on all the definitions, is that the Caribbean? That's the question I want to leave with you right there. However, I want to go on to um, I'm at cultural, yeah, cultural diversity. Uh, cultural diversity this is where we could take a, a closer look at the West Indies and define and locate their space so West Indian histor historical and cultural ties are acknowledged as are more important than ge geography in the definition like I mentioned before the differences as a real that the European legacy um, Again, it links back to language due to the fact that French or the Dutch and the British West Indies they will ready, readily include people from Venezuela, Colombia and Central America as part of their region but leave out Guyana and Belize which are located in the American mainland and now they are kind of I have ties with the English speaking islands in the Lesser Antilles um, which is the English-speaking Caribbean, which actually we would be included in, right? 
So all of these things lead us to actually be able to define the Caribbean. Again, the geological, geographical, historical, and I'm going to go on to the political now. So when you, when you think about historical, remember cultural heritage, and I, want, I, I would advise you to do a lot of reading on it on your own. A lot of reading on it on your own about the cultural heritage and the differences between different places in the Caribbean. And also the cultural diversity, again, in terms of language especially. Focus on language. Um, that's some tips right there. Alright, so political Caribbean and the different forms of government. We have republic, met, um, metropolitan, and then we have Bermuda's special case, which I will get into in a second. But first I want to start with republic. And a lot of us have a lot of a different um, ways that we go about our politics uh, in terms of the government is set up. Um, when we think of the republic, I think it is um, Cuba. Cuba? Pretty sure it's Cuba. Yeah, Cuba is, the, uh, is a republic. Yeah, and this is a form of government where the head of the state is not a monarch but is a president so very very different to our uh, political setup so all the Caribbean doesn't have the same political setups at, at all so when we're using it to define them we have to realize how diverse it truly is and you, you see these words coming back up diversity and whatnot um and then we also have metro metropolitan um where did they write the notes on that who is a metropolitan we also have federations too, which is Belize. We have independent countries like Puerto Rico. And Metropolitan is actually, in a way, I want to say Barbados. Because we still have um, the influence of the Queen in terms of the Governor General, I believe. So, as much as we are a free country so to speak or uh, independent country is the best way to put it or we have our independence since 19 damn I'm not ashamed of myself but I you know it's here um we still have that governing of the queen in terms of the governor general and I think we're changing too um so yeah that's also interesting to know and could be used in your writing when because the car has a lot of essays carbine study sorry it encompasses a lot of essay writing Anyways, so I'm going to deal with the Bermuda special case because I think it's a case worth mentioning and it could lead to information and examples and stuff that you can use to write in essays to like when you're defining the Caribbean and stuff like that and or say a question asks you to like differentiate and say whether or not um, how the definitions would encompass everything then Bermuda is the perfect case to use. So you would find that in Bermuda is very very wealthy they have i think the third highest per capita income in the world but they lie really really far up and i remember i said the 30 degrees north to actually include them in the geo geographical um definition and approximately 40 of Berm the bermuda population is actually white they don't they also don't generally come to like universities in the caribbean either they would usually go off into like America and stuff like that and ever bigger more well established countries and stuff instead of coming here but yet they're still considered in some definitions and by some persons as part of the Caribbean they're even in CARICOM even though they as I said before they're the highest per capita in terms of income in the world and yet they still benefit from CARICOM Right, so looking at Bermuda's case is very, very um, informative in terms of having to write anything about when defining the Caribbean and stating whether or stating why the definitions would have um, loopholes in terms of left leaving out somebody here or adding in somebody here that might not want to be added. Okay, and. I'm going to move on to this slide. So Caribbean identity, our ethnicity and our orange, our origin side. So ethnicity, belonging to a social group that has a common national or cultural tradition. So like I said before I had some in class like activ activities and stuff like that, but I can't necessarily do them because of the way it's set up. It's strange to me. And I, I will work on it over the coming weeks so they make the class more engaging instead of me just talking. 
but yeah. Um, so ethnicity. When you think of your ethnicity, think of all of the ethnicities you're part of, whether you might be mixed or you feel like you're from the motherland, from Africa or what have you. And think about how it makes you feel as though you belong in the, Car in the Caribbean or if you don't, right? And origins, where do we come from? So we know that you had the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Dutch and all these people coming in and, colo and colonializing or what have you in the history books. So where do you come from? Do you do you actually know? Do you know? So there's, there's these things that you have to read about when you're doing Caribbean studies. Look back and see, well, who colonized Barbados and stuff like that. And I'm actually going to say, yeah, do those readings on your own. It's very, very important. Um, I won't go through too many of them. Again, there's a lot of words and I don't want to bore you. I just want to give you the main specific things and the things to look out for um, as a student teacher, I suppose. Okay, so where do you think of Caribbean... Sorry, when you think of ethnicity, I'm going to go back there and, and say some more on that. When you think of ethnicity, um, I want you to think, what's the best way to put this? I want you to think, hmm, I want you to think about your nationality as well. And if there is prejudice between that and other nationalities and stuff like that whether they're good ties in the caribbean and stuff like that when you look focusing on any questions about ethnicity because later on we're going to get into a lot of the essay questions and stuff like that and you're going to realize why it's stressing on things like this because they usually ask questions like that you have to think like how does your ethnicity impact or your nationality for instance impact you're standing in the Caribbean. Are there Caribbean countries that are more Caribbean than other Caribbeans, if I'm allowed to say that? Um, stuff like that. The hierarchy as well. All of those things are things that you would have to look at when doing Caribbean studies and thinking about ethnicity. Alright, and I want to stop on origins here for a second as well, no? Uh, when you think of origins, you also have to dive into slavery. And again, colonialism, but the, whoever it is, whether it's Chinese, Portuguese, um, I mentioned all this before, so I'm not going to go over that. I want to just wrap up here, actually. What time is it? 30? Yeah, I got to about the 30 minute mark. So I want to wrap up here and uh, also tell you to read up on, what's another important, Creole, Creole women. Um, also the different cultures that we have in the Caribbean in terms of like, you know in Barbados just in general we have like Krapova which is part of our culture. Also look upon other cultures in other parts of the Caribbean. So like what, what are the like, cultural activities in say Jamaica, Grenada and the other um, parts of the Caribbean. Um, I will be covering a lot of this stuff in lectures to come. I will have a lot more slides as well so be prepared for that. Um, but for today, I just wanted to give you a big introductory on just the Caribbean society and culture and kind of get you thinking about what Car Caribbean studies is and how you would carry yourself in terms of gathering information and stuff like that to help you with the essays and stuff to come. Um, but I'm pretty much done.